Well, good morning, BCC family and all of you who are joining us for today's Sunday worship service. As we do each week, we begin with a call to worship, a, a reading from Scripture. This comes from Psalm 24, and the superscript on it is the King of Glory. It's interesting because this is written by another king, King David. And he writes these words, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and those who dwell therein, for he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? And who shall stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not lift up his soul to what is false, who does not swear deceitfully. He will receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek the face of the God of Jacob. This is God's promise that if we seek his face, we will find him because he has enabled us to find him. He has made a way where there was no way and he has drawn us to himself that we now would desire to seek him because of the work of his Holy Spirit in our lives. And so let's do just that. Let's seek our God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our salvation. Pray with me if you would. Lord, thank you. We seek your face. And to seek your face is to seek your presence, to be with you. And we know that your face is to turned toward us because you love us and you call us your own. And so, Lord, as we worship you today, may we see you. May we experience you. May we know you. Come fill our homes. Come fill our souls as we worship you during this time of Sunday worship. And in a moment, as we lift our voices and praise to you, may you fill the place where we are at, all of us in our respective locations. May you meet us there, that we might collectively worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you for this time, for this service, for this worship experience with you. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Let's lift our voice in song to our great God. He's coming on the clouds. Kings and kingdoms will bow down. Every chain will break, his broken hearts declare his praise. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Cause our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power, fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before him. Our God is the Lamb. The lamb that was slain for the sins of the world His blood breaks the chains Every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb Every knee will bow before him Oh So open up the gate Make way before the King of Kings The God who comes to say He's here to set the captives free but Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Cause our God is the Lion The Lion of Judah He's roaring with power and fighting our battles Every knee will bow before him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains. Every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every knee will bow before him. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who 
can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? Cause our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power, fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains Every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb Every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb Every knee will bow before him Oh, oh, my light when I cannot see when I can't take another step Lord will you carry me when I've lost my fight will you be my strength will you set me a table in the presence of my enemies I shall not want I shall not want Oh, my soul's got a shepherd in the valley And I shall not want I shall not want I shall not want Cause my cup's running over, running over And I shall not want I will lift my eyes Where my help comes from and I won't be afraid of the shadow Cause I've seen the sun And I will not stop When the way gets hard Cause the green only grows in the valley And that's where you are I shall not walk I shall not walk Oh, my soul's got a shepherd in the valley And I shall not walk I shall not walk, I shall not walk Cause my cup's running over, running over and I shall not walk I got everything that I need, your goodness and your mercy I got everything that I need, your goodness and your mercy I got everything that I need, your goodness and your mercy. Cause I got goodness and I got mercy. Hallelujah, glory, hallelujah. I got goodness and I got mercy. Hallelujah. I got goodness and I got mercy. Hallelujah, glory, hallelujah. The good shepherd leads me to the waters. Hallelujah, glory, hallelujah. Hey, he anoints me, anoints me with his own. Now my cup is, my cup is running over, hallelujah, glory, hallelujah, hey, I won't fear no, fear no evil, 
Community Church and friends, I'm Jalissa, and we have a few announcements for you this morning. First, we have a message from Lisa Bruno. Hi, BCC family. Lisa Bruno here, Director of Care, coming to you with another opportunity to serve. 
our neighbors here in Northern Westchester. We have partnered with the community center in their Erase the Need drive um, for school supplies. They hope to help 1,800 students in this area have the supplies that they need to start school in the fall. We have committed to providing 50 bags. So there's a combination of a variety of elementary, middle, and high school bags. Um, this is what you would pick up. You would fill it, the, the supplies that you need for each type of bag is included, the list is included in the bag, and you would pick up one on Sunday during, before or after service, and it needs to be back to the church by July 18th. We would love for you to, um, you are a very generous group of people, we would love for you to commit to this and so we can supply at least 50 children um, with the supplies that they need for school in September. Thanks again for all your generosity. We wanted to remind you that next week is Communion Sunday. Let's take this week to reflect and prepare our hearts. Here at BCC, we have four ways to give online at bedfordcommunitychurch.org, on our Tidely app, through the mail, and in person when you attend services. We are so glad you decided to join us today. Enjoy the service. Good morning again, BCC family, and all of you joining us for today's broadcast. My name is Josh, and I have the privilege of serving as lead pastor here at Bedford Community Church, for any of you that I have not met yet. We're honored to have you here for today's service. So last Sunday, we actually began our outdoor services on the lawn here at BCC. It was incredible to see so many people come out and to have the church, or at least part of the church, together for one large service. So let me encourage you, if you're able, join us this next Sunday for the launch of our new sermon series, Out of Office, The Bible's Prescription for R&R. It promises to be a great way to kick off the summer season and to get our heads and hearts ready for all that God has for us in the months ahead. Today we conclude our current two-part series entitled, Hey Jude, a song that calls us home. Utilizing the Beatles song, Hey Jude, as an illustration for the difficulties of families and relationships, we find that it is only through Christ, his death and resurrection, that we find healing and restoration, both with God and with others. Last week, we delved into the epistle of Jude and reviewed the tumultuous realities of family, even within the family life of Jesus himself. We learned about how our actions impact others and how God calls us to live within the safeguards of sound doctrine and biblical living, not to limit us, but to help us to see what real freedom and healthy relationships look like. If you missed last week's episode, I'd encourage you to go to our website, bedfordcommunitychurch.org, or to our Bedford Community Church YouTube channel and watch the service from last week. Today, we look at the final third of Jude's letter to the early church, where we find the assurance that God will indeed be with us and lead us home. So join me as I begin reading the text at verse 17. It says this from the English Standard Version of the Bible. But you must remember, beloved, the predictions of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. They said to you, in the last time there will be scoffers following their ungodly passions. It is these who cause divisions, worldly people devoid of the Spirit. But you, beloved, building yourselves up in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit, Keep yourselves in the love of God, waiting for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ that leads to eternal life. And have mercy on those who doubt. Save others by snatching them out of the fire. To others, show mercy with fear, hating even the garment stained by the flesh. Now, to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy, to the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen. This is the word of God. Would you pray with me? Lord, we give you thanks and praise for the assurance of your nearness to us. Because of your finished work on Calvary's cross, the veil was torn. And access to God is available to all who would believe. We thank you that you call us to yourself. And we thank you that you are the God who does a great work in us and assures us of your salvation. 
Lord, if it depended on us, we'd mess it up. But thankfully, it depends on you, on your goodness, on your grace, on your mercy. And so today, as we read these words and understand the truth of your gospel, that you will help us persevere, that you are indeed with us, that we are not alone, that we're not fighting this battle, waging this war, living this life by ourselves, but that your spirit lives in us. Lord, may this assurance give us great joy, great comfort, great hope today. Do now what only you can do. Take an imperfect man with imperfect words and imperfect thoughts to declare your perfect truth by the work of your Holy Spirit in conjunction with your eternal word. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. So let it out and let it in. Hate you'd begin. You're waiting for someone to perform with. And don't you know that it's just you? Hey, dude, you do. The movement you need is on your shoulder. Na, 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 na. Well, I hope you like that. So let it out and let it in. Hey Jude, begin. You're waiting for someone to perform with. And don't you know that it's just you? Hey Jude, you'll do. The movement you need is on your shoulder. Did did you catch those final words? The movement you need is on your shoulder. This line is the most confusing and yet talked about line in the entire masterpiece of Hey Jude. I mean, let's be honest, right? It's not difficult for song lyrics to be confusing. And that's if you can even understand what an artist is singing. Confession, I spent most of the 80s making up lyrics to my favorite songs because I had no idea what they were saying, thanks to the poorly articulating artists of my time, like Michael Jackson, Elton John, and Def Leppard. And it wasn't just my generation. Bob Dylan pretty much sang like he had marbles in his mouth, and Pearl Jam sounded like they just got out of bed and were singing in the shower. Now, out of a deep courtesy to our younger people, I will reserve my comments about current music. That is, if we can actually classify it within the category of music. But enough of the music wars. Let's go back to the Beatles. They were a different story. So much of how music evolved over the years is attributed to their influence and that of the British invasion that they are credited with leading. But like many of the songs of their time, and even up to this day, the more seemingly mysterious the lyrics of a song sound, the more intrigue that surrounds it. I mean, think about it with me for a second. Songs like Hotel California or American Pie, both were overanalyzed for years as to a hidden meaning. Don McLean was famously asked in an interview, what does the song American Pie actually mean? (laughs) His reply was priceless. It means I'll never have to work another day in my life. (laughs) And with good reason. It's estimated that he makes nearly half a million dollars on royalties just from that song. So again, the Beatles with this mysterious line, the movement you need is on your shoulder. Well, it's common knowledge, if you know anything about Beatles lore, that Paul McCartney wrote the music for his songs first and then added the lyrics. He would often use something called filler lyrics until he could come up with something better. You might have heard about this. Some of you might even know the famous story about the filler lyrics for the song Yesterday, right? Yesterday, all my troubles seem so far away. Well, the filler lyrics actually sounded like this. Scrambled eggs. Oh, my darling, you've got lovely legs. True story. Well, Paul marks the culmination of the song, Hey Jude, the final rousing stanza before the repeat of the first verse, with a filler lyric that seemingly makes no sense. The movement you need is on your shoulder. But when he played it for John Lennon, the response was decisive. John said, leave those words just as they are. People have tried for decades to figure out what this verse means. And I want to tell you that today, right here on this broadcast, I am going to solve this age-old mystery. 
See, for many of us, we go through life wondering how we're going to make it through. We wonder what life is all about. We wonder how to navigate the messy intricacies of life and love and relationships of meaning and purpose and eternity. In essence, we learn to make up the lines as we go along. We're just like Paul McCartney, writing the song without the lyrics. For many of us, we use filler lines just like the Beatles. Much of what we do doesn't seem to make sense, but it's kind of the best we've got, right? That's how many of us have lived our lives. And then out of nowhere, God shows up. Suddenly, our song takes on meaning. The words that seemed meaningless all of a sudden make sense. And the reality of the gospel sets right that which was so wrong for so long. And and we see that even in the midst of our waywardness and confusion, God was always there. The impetus, the inspiration, the movement that we always needed was right on our shoulder. Listen to the lyrics again and, and see if this doesn't describe something for you. So let it out and let it in. Hey Jude, begin. You're waiting for someone to perform with. Now, don't you know that it's just you, hey Jude, you'll do. The movement you need is on your shoulder. This is the song, the story, the narrative for so many of us. We, we didn't even realize that God was there with us the whole time. The sad reality is we still don't. Many of us, though followers of Christ, still live as though we're alone that it's all up to us, that we're the ones holding up the universe. We struggle to make it through each day, and we hope that we have enough to endure to the end of this race called life. Church, God has an important message for us today. The movement you need is on your shoulder. The final third of the epistle of Jude is a much-needed reminder of who is leading us home and that he will be faithful to get us there. Join me at verse 17, where Jude begins this passage with these words. But you must remember, beloved, the predictions of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. They said to you, in the last time there will be scoffers following their ungodly passions. It is these who cause divisions, worldly people, devoid of the Spirit. As we have witnessed the changes in our present societal context over the past 18 months, there are many who feel that the world is irreversibly changed and not really for the better. Especially I see this in the church. We, we seemingly see division and derision winning the day, right? We lament a society that has lost its moral compass, but we also recognize that the church has lost its voice and legitimacy to speak into that culture. And while on a human level I can fully empathize with this reality, it reveals something about ourselves as Christians that maybe we'd rather not discuss, and that's this. The fact that maybe we are a little too enamored with the world and the culture in which we live. Maybe for the church in the United States, we have a niche, a sweet spot, a place where we could be both Christian and comfortable, both committed and at the same time complacent, both called by God and coddled by our modern comforts. This is why the church in Jude's day is so foreign to us. British historian Tom Holland highlights the posture of the early church in his excellent work, Dominion, How the Christian Revolution Remade the World. Holland writes this, Their delight in posing as aliens, as transients, made a boast out of what should properly have been a cause of shame. To them, a homeland is a foreign country, and a foreign country is a homeland. Jude echoes the New Testament writers who assert the words of Christ in John 16, 33. In the world, you will have tribulation, but take heart. I have overcome the world. And how are we to overcome the world? Jude outlines this in the next section. Pick up the text with me in verse 20. But you, beloved, building yourselves up in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, waiting for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ that leads to eternal life. And have mercy on those who doubt. Save others by snatching them out of the fire. To others, show mercy with fear 
hating even the garment stained by the flesh. These are powerful, profound words. There is so very much here to unpack, right? Well, the first thing to note is the verbs that Jude uses. Building, praying, keeping, waiting. These are the core marks of the Christian life. These are active, volitional identifiers of the true church at any time throughout the 2,000 years since Christ. And they capture not only the urgency, but the reality that the Christian life is not a Disney cruise ship that we leisurely enjoy until we reach the final port of heaven where Mickey, Minnie, and Jesus await us on the crystal shores. No, no, that's not the case. The Christian life is a battleship where we war for our own souls and for the souls of others. Empowered and edified by God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit to accomplish the plans for which we were created. This is the warring, empowered posture of the church on earth, a a broken but beautiful vessel of God's grace and love. And this passage illustrates well the mission of the church to transform the world around us. And the catalyst for this change is the power of the gospel of Christ, which saves people unto eternal life. At this point, let me pause and tell you a little bit more about my story. As many of you know, my early life was all about what I wanted to do and and what I could accomplish. As I approached my final years in high school, there were various options on the table for my future. Sure, I considered going to college, but my heart really led me in two other directions. Either I could continue my professional acting career in New York City, do it full-time, I had been doing it since I was 10 years old, or I could pursue a professional soccer career in Brazil as I had the opportunity to try out for a handful of teams. My parents, through all of it, convinced me to go to college and then to pursue one of those two options if I wanted. But in college, I fell in love with two people that changed the trajectory of my life. The first was Christ. The second, my wife, Denise. I remember wrestling even then as I was finishing college what was going to happen with my future. But there's a night in my mind that permanently sealed the deal for me. I was having a conversation with my parents and and my uncle, who was visiting from California. This was my senior year of college, and he was a professional singer and musician in L.A. And he was actually encouraging me to come out and try my hand out there. I could continue my acting career and delve into the possibility of a music career as well. But my convictions for my future had changed throughout the course of my college years. The conversation crystallized at one point when these words came out of my mouth. The world doesn't need another great artist or singer or actor. No, what the world needs is Jesus, not me. After hearing myself, I realized that I had come to an epiphany that would never be reversed. My life's mission was to reach as many people as I could with the gospel of Christ's love and grace and salvation. I share this with you today, not because I want you to think, what a great guy, but instead to convince you that I'm not. I wanted to be rich and famous and worshipped. But God in his grace got hold of me, and now my life is a picture of Jude 20 through 23. In the same way that God snatched my life from the fires of my own pride and vanity, I've offered my life to serve him by snatching others from the fire offering them the very same grace and mercy that I've received in Christ. Why? Because he's the only way to make it. The only hope for the song of our lives making any sense. Pick up the text with me in verse 24. Now, to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy to the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, Be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen. Did you hear that, Jude? You're not alone. You can't do it on your own. And you don't need to. The the help, the impetus, the movement you need is on your shoulder. God is right there with you. And he will help you make it home. He will keep you from stumbling and present you blameless on the day that you meet him face to face. He will do it. That's why this letter ends with such power and proclamation. Because God, the one and only true God, sees you and knows you. 
He watches your life as you've made up filler lines to the story of your life, trying to assuage your pain through self-medication or self-aggrandizement on social media. He sees the quiet desperation in which you live, and he offers you a better way. Let me close with this. The Holy Spirit, the very presence of God in Scripture, is termed the paraclete. That's the Greek word for it. And it basically means the one who comes alongside of, the one who stands beside. And the picture that we have even is the one who's on your shoulder. I know that many of you grew up watching cartoons where there was an angel on one shoulder and a devil on another shoulder. And that was trite and funny. But the truth of Scripture is far more profound. God actually comes alongside of us. He stands with us. He holds us up. He carries us through all the experiences of our lives. When we think about the song, Hey Jude, we think about a young boy going through something that he just didn't have the resources to handle. We think about a man who wrote a song about a little boy realizing what a harsh and hard world it is. And we think about him offering the best hope that he could. That song, that hope, that offering from Paul McCartney has changed the modern world as we know it. But it pales in comparison to the masterpiece that Christ has made. That through his life, through his death, through his resurrection, now the movement you need truly is right there, beside you, along this journey with you. I want to speak to you today. If you're alone, if you feel like life has beaten you down, if you feel like you are carrying this burden by yourself, God has these words for you. Come to me if you are tired and weary, and I'll give you rest. Take my burden, which is his love, upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and humble of spirit and I will give you rest for your souls. Today, would you invite him to be your rest? Today, would you allow him to speak his words of love and hope into your life? Today, would you recognize that through all the times in your life where you thought you were alone, where you thought no one had your back, that God was and is with you, that you might be assured that he will stand beside you, on your shoulder, with you every step of the way, and present you blameless on the day that you arrive home. Pray with me if you would. Lord, thank you so much for this assurance. Life is not easy, but you have come that we might overcome the world. Thank you for this. Thank you that you didn't tell us that life was going to be easy. Thank you that you were honest with us. You told us that in this world we would find much tribulation, but that we can be of good cheer because you have overcome the world. And by you overcoming the world, you will then help us overcome the world. Lord, we thank you that you are the one who heals and restores and leads us home. Would you do that today in our midst? Would you do that today for us? And as we lift our voice in worship and response to you now, would you fill our hearts with the assurance that we are not alone, that you are with us. Emmanuel, God with us. In your name we pray and now worship. Amen and amen. For we trust in our God And through His unfailing love We will not be shaken We will not be shaken We will not be shaken For we trust in our God And through his unfailing love, 
We will not be shaken. We will not be shaken. We will not be shaken. Though the battle rages, we will stand and fight. Though the armies rise up against us on all sides, we will not be shaken. We will not be shaken. We will not be shaken. For in the hour of our darkest day, we will not tremble. We won't be afraid. Hope is rising like the light of dawn. Our God is for us, He has overcome. For we trust in our God, and through His unfailing love, we will not be shaken, we will not be shaken, we will not be shaken. For we trust in our God And through His unfailing love We will not be shaken We will not be shaken We will not be shaken All those against him will fall For our God is stronger He can do all things No higher name we can call For Jesus is greater We can do all things All those against him will fall our God is stronger, He can do all things. No higher name we can call, for Jesus is greater, we can do all things. For we trust in our God. We will not be shaken. We will not be shaken. Oh, for we trust in our God. And through His unfailing love, oh, we will not be shaken. We will not be shaken. We will not be shaken. Oh, oh, oh. oh we trust in you alone. Oh, Lord. oh we trust in you alone. God and through his unfailing love we will not be shaken we will not be shaken we will not be shaken